This anime begins by showing us a village in flames, surrounded by monsters, who are responsible for eliminating any survivor in their path. Then the scene changes to a political meeting among girls, who are discussing the situation in Mato. Meanwhile, a boy at his school, Yuki Wakura, was cleaning windows. He and his classmates were preparing classrooms for the students. We learn here that the girls have blessings, also known as powers. Unlike women, men are born without a blessing, which complicates their lifestyles. Most of them are forced to perfect all their talents from childhood, and those who did not wish to practice were punished. After finishing his work at school, Yuki left and on his way home, he was surrounded by a thick fog. Yuki recognized this phenomenon and found himself in Mato. He quickly tried to find his manual to know what to do. Mato is referred to as an alternate dimension connected through doors that suddenly appeared in various places in Japan. The damage caused by civilians wandering in Mato is called Mato mishaps. If someone got lost in Mato, it was best not to go anywhere and wait for the demonic defense force to arrive. Yuki decided to stay put, but suddenly, something emerged from the ground. Yuki turned around and saw a monster. The monster attacked, and Yuki began to flee for his life. However, he was quickly cornered. He tried to defend himself by throwing stones, but it was useless, and he only angered them more. A monster with hair appeared to hold back the rest, being tamed by a girl. She asked Yuki if he was a victim of a motto mishap, which he confirmed. She mentioned he was unfortunate to be immediately attacked by the Shukis. After this, the girl faced a group of Shukis and defeated each of them effortlessly. She approached the protagonist and introduced herself as Kayoka Yuzen, the seventh commander of the Demonic Defense Force. Kayoka told Yuki to stay away, as more Shukis were appearing. Seeing the overwhelming number, Kayoka decided to flee on her tamed Shuki, invoking a chain to cling to the monster and took Yuki with her, warning him not to speak during the escape or he would bite his tongue. The Shukis quickly pursued Kayoka. Yuki, out of curiosity, looked back and noticed a girl following them. A military van appeared to escort Kayoka, and the girls introduced themselves as Himuri Azuma, Nyoko Mura, and Sushi Saruga, members of the 7th Squadron, commanded by Kayoka. Kayoka asked about the situation, and Saruga explained there were no more victims in the area. Kayoka ordered them to expand the search radius. Akuamura used her blessing to perceive everything around her, and realized they were being ambushed by a group of Shukis, quickly alerting Kayoka. Kayoka asked them to handle the situation while she took Yuuki to safety. The girls stopped the van and confronted the Shukis so Kayoka could escape. Himuri told the protagonist to follow Kayoka's orders if he wanted to survive. Then, using her blessing, she transformed one of her arms into a weapon and shot at the Shukis. Tsurugi used her power to grow larger and with a strong stomp, sent most of the monsters flying. We learn that among women with blessings, there are different specializations, and those who excel in all areas are recruited into the Demonic Defense Force. This organization is often considered a rumor, as few men usually see it. Yuki was surprised that this organization existed and especially that they were strong enough to contain the dimensional threat of the Shukis. After a while of fighting, Himuri finished off the last Shuki and all the girls returned to the van. Akuamura found an unconscious boy and carried him to the vehicle. Himuri asked if the boy was alright, to which Akuamura replied that he seemed unharmed. Himuri congratulated her for finding the boy and asked her to continue using her blessing to find more civilians who might have gotten lost. Saruga asked if Kayoka had reached the dormitory, but none were sure. The boy finally woke up and Akuamura tried to calm him down, explaining that he had been a victim of a motto mishap. The boy quickly asked where his sister was, alarming the girls, as Akuamura could not perceive any girl in the area. Yuki asked Kayoka where they were going, as they had been fleeing for a long time. She explained that once inside Motto, the victim must perform three actions. First, remain silent and wait for rescue. Second, prioritize their own safety and escape as far as possible if they encounter a Shuki. And third, not waste time talking inside the dimension. Yuki took this as a reprimand from Kayoka, as it was the first time he had heard of these rules. Suddenly, she stopped abruptly upon hearing a girl's voice. The protagonist asked what was happening and decided to look over a cliff, witnessing a girl fleeing from a Shuki. Yuki recognized her as one of the girls he had seen on the street before everything happened. Kayoka went to save her and jumped off the cliff. The girl, cornered by the Shuki, decided to jump into the void. Kayoka used this to her advantage to catch the girl with the help of her tamed Shuki and tried to escape. However, she realized her Shuki was starting to tire, so she had no choice but to fight the group of Shukis to let her companion rest. 
the situation spiraled out of control due to the Shuki's abnormal aggressiveness, reaching a point where both Yuki and the girl were about to die. Kayoka prevented this by creating a barrier that enclosed the three of them, protecting them from the threat. Kayoka asked them to stay calm and remain silent to think about what to do, followed by a flashback of Kayoka. In her past, she had bad luck with her blessing. Despite her great physical strength and endurance, her blessing was more of a disadvantage, leading to mockery from other girls aspiring to join the demonic defense force, especially because of her dream to become the supreme commander of the organization. Back in the present, Kayoka tried to motivate herself with this desire to prove that despite having a weak blessing, she could become a supreme commander and control the other commanders if she put her mind to it. She then came up with an idea and looked at Yuuki. Unsure if the plan would work, she needed to do something to get the civilians out alive. She approached Yuuki and proposed that he become her slave, as this was part of the conditions of her blessing. Before doing so, she warned the girl to cover her eyes. The girl did so, and Kayoka threw the protagonist to the ground to lick her finger. Yuuki, not understanding what he was supposed to do, licked her finger, fulfilling the conditions of Kayoka's blessing, causing a powerful aura to surround Yuuki. Kayoka's squad arrived in their vehicle, witnessing the moment and wondering what Kayoka was doing. Yuuki underwent a metamorphosis, turning into a metallic giant with chains. The girls were surprised as it was the first time someone used her blessing on a man. Yuuki used the power granted to him to defeat each Shuki with a single blow, his mere presence causing some of the monsters to retreat. Kayoka took advantage of this to ride on the protagonist's back and took the girl. Yuuki charged at all the Shukis and managed to escape. Kayoka was surprised by the man's good reflexes and returned the girl to her brother. Despite everything, the defeated Shukis gradually regenerated and merged into one becoming a much larger and more powerful Shuki. Kayoka decided to handle the situation with Yuuki, and together, combining their power, they defeated the Shuki, causing an explosion so large that it pushed back the squadron. Seeing no more threats in the area, Kayoka decided to release Yuuki. The squadron approached the commander, and Himari asked to leave immediately, but Kayoka responded that they go ahead as she had something important to discuss with the protagonist. The girls left, and Kayoka offered Yuuki the opportunity to work in the demonic defense force, on the condition that he continue to be her slave, as he is someone with great power. Yuuki was unpleasantly surprised by this, as he did not want to be treated as a slave. Kayoka approached to explain how her blessing works, which is the ability to tame any living being and unleash all its potential and power to fight together. However, to maintain the slavery contract, she must reward the slave with what they most desire. Kayoka decided to kiss Yuuki as a reward, realizing that this is what he really wanted. Kayoka clarified that all her slaves had been Shukis, and she always gave them pork since that's what they desired most. This was the first time she had tamed and rewarded a human. Yuuki couldn't believe that the kiss was indeed a reward. Kayoka asked him if he wanted another kiss, as she had exerted herself and needed to follow the conditions of her blessing. Yuuki nervously declined, stating that one was enough. Kayoka moved closer to the protagonist to kiss him again. Yuuki asked her to stop, but Kayoka commented that she couldn't help it, as her body was moving against her will, and she believed it might be because the reward was not sufficient according to the conditions of the blessing. Kayoka kissed Yuuki again, and they remained like that for a while. Meanwhile, the Seventh Squadron communicated with the Demonic Defense Force, reporting that they had rescued three civilians from Mato. Back with Kayoka, she picked up her hat, and the protagonist couldn't believe that his first kiss happened in Mato. Kayoka told Yuuki that if any Shuki could enter the human world, there would be a huge number of casualties. For that reason, her goal is to become the supreme commander of the Demonic Defense Force and exterminate all the Shukis before they can infiltrate the human world. She explained that the current commander is too lenient and doesn't take the threat of the Shukis seriously. However, now that she has enslaved a human, she believes she can achieve becoming the supreme commander, as she was able to use her ability to the fullest, something that never happened when taming Shukis. So, she offered the protagonist another opportunity to work in the organization. Yuuki explained to Kayoka that he is not very good academically or in sports. The only thing he is really confident in being useful at his household chores. Hearing this, Kayoka became excited and tasked Yuuki with doing the household chores, as she couldn't do them. Besides, she encouraged Yuuki, saying he shouldn't refer to himself in that way. After all, he risked his life to protect the girl before she could form the barrier. If it weren't for that, she would never have thought of enslaving a human. His act of risking his life for someone else is worthy of every man. 
Yuki was encouraged by these words, as it was the first time someone praised him for his actions. He had spent his life receiving humiliations from the girls and students at the school where he worked. Yuki fell silent for a moment and then looked intently at Kayoka, telling her that in that case, he wished to become a hero. Kayoka, hearing this, recalled that she had also wished the same in the past, so she used her blessing to make another contract with the protagonist so he could cooperate with the organization. This excited Yuuki, as he had lost his older sister to the Shukis and, being part of the demonic defense force, could avenge her. Kayoka and Yuuki went to the dormitory of the 7th Squadron. Kayoka told her team that Yuuki would work as a caretaker, which annoyed the protagonist, as he didn't think of being a caretaker. Kayoka explained that a man couldn't enter the organization as such, so he had to be content with being a slave. Yuuki was somewhat disappointed by this but had no choice but to follow orders and take care of the house until needed to subjugate Shukis. Kayoka introduced him to each member of the squadron, and they all welcomed him to the team. In the seventh squadron bedroom of the demonic defense force, Yuuki finished cleaning the entire building, including the entrance and the bridge connecting the building to Mado. He was cheerful because everything was perfectly clean. However, he thought about doing something with the views since the location didn't favor the appearance. Yuuki felt a tremor and got scared when he saw a Shuki emerge from the ground and leap to attack him. The monster collided with the dormitory barrier. The protagonist was relieved that the barrier existed but surprised that Shukis could also appear near the dormitories. The Akawamura approached the protagonist to make sure he was okay and greeted him. Yuuki welcomed him, and Akawamura started laughing at the protagonist's fright. He explained that the 7th Squadron is in the unfortunate southwest area of Yurikimen in Mato. For that reason, Shukis tend to appear more in the area than usual, even more than in the other dormitories. Yuuki asked what Yurikimen was, and Akawamura explained that Mato is an alternative dimension as large as the city of Tokyo. Each region of Mato is divided into eight different directions, each with its own demonic defense force. Yuuki asked why they didn't count the fourth if there were ten headquarters. Akawamura explained that the fourth is considered unlucky. The protagonist thanked him for the explanation as he was completely lost when it came to Mato. Yuuki asked if they shouldn't get rid of the Shuki trying to enter the dormitory. Akawamura commented that that Shuki was just a small fish they could easily ignore. Yuuki wasn't very sure about this, but before giving his opinion, Himari intervened with a shot that ended the Shuki. She scolded the protagonist for talking instead of working. Himari took Akawamura inside the dormitory and asked Yuuki to prepare the food. Yuki complained that he could have hurt him or Akawamura with the shots, but Himari said she could control the direction and aim of the bullets. Yuki felt someone approaching and looked around, but not seeing anyone, he decided to continue with his task. He entered the dormitory to prepare the food and took care of finishing all the household chores. After this, he would have a meeting with Kayoka to ask her to give him other tasks, as he felt that with the household chores, he wasn't doing anything for the squadron and was getting bored. Kayoka replied that she would only call him when necessary. Until then, he should focus on the domestic tasks. Yuuki tried to negotiate with her, but Himari threatened the protagonist with a sword, saying that disobeying the orders of a commander is a very serious offense. Kayoka mentioned that she has no doubt that the squadron is uncomfortable with the presence of a male caretaker since the dormitory is for girls. However, they will have to get used to it, whether they like it or not, as he is not only a skilled home caretaker, but also someone important for the functioning of their blessing. She warned that if Yuuki misbehaves or does something that bothers any member, she will take care of punishing him. Later, the protagonist went up to the dormitory's watchtower to clean it and unintentionally witnessed Himari bathing in the dormitory's hot springs. He quickly hid as he didn't expect that. Suruga found Yuuki in the tower and teased him for spying on her. The protagonist was surprised to see her as she was too small. Suruga explained that her blessing allows her to grow or shrink. She took out her phone and took a picture of Yuuki. The protagonist asked what she was doing. Suruga said she had been watching him closely because she wanted to know how a man works, and finding him spying, she understood everything. She asked if she should show the photo to Kayoka. Yuuki tried to explain that he didn't know about the hot springs and, feeling threatened, asked if she wanted money. Suruga replied no, clarifying that if he didn't want to get into trouble, he would have to act as her slave from now on. Yuuki had no choice but to accept and do all of Suruga's tasks for her. She mentioned that she wanted to read more mangas lately, romance ones didn't excite her. Yuuki took advantage of Suruga being distracted on her phone to think of a plan. He wanted to take it away at all costs to delete the photo, otherwise, he'd be harassed for the rest of his life. Suruga left her phone on the bed, and Yuuki tried to grab it, but she noticed and quickly snatched it back. 
Suruga warned him to be careful with what he was trying to do or she would show the photo. Yuuki continued tidying up the room and found some panties. He asked Suruga if he could put them away, and she said yes, so the protagonist took them to organize them. Suruga took advantage of this to take another photo of Yuuki, saying that now she had more blackmail material. Later, Yuuki left the room, heard a noise outside, and decided to investigate what was causing it. He found Kayoka and Himari training, exchanging blows, where Kayoka was explaining how to move and strike a Shuki. At that moment, a Shuki appeared and tried to infiltrate the dormitory, but the barrier stopped it. Kayoka took advantage of this to use the monster as an example and ran to attack it. She wanted to show Himari how to fight a Shuki in case she couldn't use a blessing. The force Kayoka applied to her blows was such that she managed to destroy the Shuki's body without much effort which scared Yuuki, thinking about how strong the punishment could be if Suruga decided to send the photos. Himari praised Kayoka's strength. Yuuki was frozen with fear, and Akawamura appeared to get the protagonist's attention, saying he had news for him. Yuuki paid attention, and Ni said that she, Kayoka, and Himari would leave to attend a meeting, so his mission was to watch over the dormitory with Suruga. The latter overheard the conversation by chance and started smiling, as she had more opportunities to blackmail the protagonist. He realized that Suruga had heard everything and tried to think of a plan so that nothing bad would happen. Later, Yuuki was giving Suruga a shoulder massage, trying to think of a way to stop everything. But his thoughts were interrupted when Suruga asked him how he was so good at giving massages. Yuuki explained that he used to give them to his older sister, so he learned a lot. Suruga was delighted to hear this and mentioned that she was the youngest of three sisters in her family. However, she grew up without a dad and attended all-girls schools her whole life, so she never talked to a boy before. For that reason, she decided to spy on him to know how a man acts, and then decided to turn him into her slave because it seemed fun. Yuki didn't quite agree with that opinion, but Suruga argued that the most important thing is to have fun. After all, the human world is boring, and the dimension of Mato is full of excitement. Yuuki asked if that reason justifies the dangers she usually gets into because if a mission goes wrong, she could die. Suruga said yes, as it would be just like the manga stories she reads, and only then can she feel like the protagonist of her story. Suruga asked the protagonist to play a video game together, and he accepted, not without warning that he's quite good at games. Suruga took this as a challenge and proposed that the loser has to take off a piece of clothing. Yuuki refused, but Suruga reminded him that he was a slave, so he had no right to refuse an order. Yuuki had no choice but to accept to get back at her in a game. They both played Street Fighter, despite the protagonist's efforts, he wouldn't be able to beat Suruga. She asked the protagonist to take off his clothes, after all, that was the condition for the loser. Yuuki said he couldn't do that because it's too serious a crime. Suruga reminded him that they were in motto, so the penalties weren't that severe. Yuuki reminded her that he's a man. And if he took off his clothes, the situation could end badly. Suruga started laughing and grew bigger, telling the protagonist to calm down because with her power, she wouldn't let a man take advantage of her. Suruga immobilized Yuuki and took off his clothes, then started laughing and teasing him because he was small. These words bothered the protagonist, as that's what hurt a man the most. At that moment, a strong tremor shook the building. Yuuki and Suruga were alarmed, so they didn't hesitate to go out to see what was happening. They both went to the courtyard and found a huge Shuki, who was cracking the dormitory barrier. Yuuki was worried about this, as everyone else had already gone to the meeting. Suruga decided to handle the situation and became giant, reaching the same size as the Shuki. After all, this type of fights gave her too much advantage with her blessing. The Shuki tried to hit Suruga, but she dodged and grabbed the monster's arm, applying a lock that brought it down. Then she began to spin and threw the Shuki into the sky. The monster couldn't do anything, and Suruga took the opportunity to grow even bigger, finishing it off with a blow. The impact was such that it caused an earthquake that shook the entire region, and the Shuki was defeated. Suruga reduced her size a bit and was surprised by an even bigger Shuki, which attacked her from behind. Suruga fell to the ground from the blow, but quickly got up and tried to contain the monster. However, it was able to split its body, generating more Shukis which managed to trap Suruga. She tried to shrink to free herself, but her blessing didn't work. The bigger monster took the opportunity to deliver a strong hook to Suruga, injuring her. Yuuki started to worry as Suruga was having a hard time in the fight due to the energy drain. The protagonist wanted to transform like he did last time, but without Kayoka, he couldn't do it. He tried to think of something to help Suruga. At that moment, an idea came to him, and he deduced that if he transformed by licking Kayoka's finger, then he must come into contact with something Suruga likes. 
Quickly, he went to her room and kissed a sweaty rack. His body reacted by absorbing the energy, confirming the protagonist's theory. He tried to find something that could provoke a stronger reaction. The tremor intensified, and he went out to see what was happening. Suruga was having a lot of difficulties and had many wounds on her body. Yuki found one of Kayoka's boots and tried licking it, which caused him to absorb enough energy to transform halfway. The protagonist quickly went out to help. Suruga sensed Yuki's presence and was amazed to see him being able to transform at will. Yuki asked Suruga to trap the Shuki. She quickly grabbed the monster's arm, and our protagonist delivered a powerful kick. The power was such that it completely disintegrated the Shuki's body, even destroying the surrounding mountains. Yuki lost his transformation after spending all the energy on that blow, and began to descend through the air. Suruga caught him and safely placed him on the ground, saying that forcing a transformation is exaggerated. Yuki said he did it because he wanted to save her and also wanted to show that men are not weak and can also fight even if they don't have a blessing. Suruga started laughing at the protagonist's comments and returned to her normal size. At that moment, she noticed that Yuuki's towel had fallen, and she was amazed to see that he was now well endowed. Yuuki tried to explain that every time he transforms, he usually has that problem and quickly covered himself. Later, the squadron returned to the dormitory, and Kayoka gave the protagonist a back massage, as his body was injured from forcing his transformation. Yuuki asked Kayoka if they shouldn't fix the cracks in the barrier. Himari began to mock Yuuki, saying that his body couldn't withstand the consequences of forcing a transformation even though it was only for a few seconds. Kayoka clarified to the protagonist that there was no need to worry about that. The barriers that protect important places, like the dormitories and the forests where the peaches grow, have special properties that allow them to repair themselves. The duration of this repair depends on the severity of the damage. Yuuki, upon hearing this, understood why the Shuki that tried to infiltrate initially couldn't break the barrier, as the regeneration was much stronger than the damage caused by that Shuki. Meanwhile, the demonic defense force was attacked by a strange Shuki in the forest. It wiped out the squadron in the area. A girl ordered the Shuki not to kill them and to focus on finding Yuuki as his presence was felt throughout Mato and she was interested in him. We see a portal opening, from which the protagonist and Kayoka would emerge. Kayoka asked Yuuki to wait as she would take care of all the paperwork. Here we are explained that the entrance gate of the 5th squadron is connected all the way to Yamagata, and it only took them 20 minutes to reach the other side. For Yuuki, interdimensional travels were madness. Kayoka approached the protagonist after finishing the paperwork and thanked him for waiting. Yuuki looked at her attentively, impressed by how beautiful his companion was. Kayoka asked if something was wrong, to which the protagonist quickly pretended, saying that it's nice to be back in the native world. Kayoka replied that anyone would burn out without a break from work, but free time is scarce. So, she recommended the protagonist to enjoy the fresh air while he could. Yuuki accompanied her and asked where they were going. She didn't want to answer and left without further ado. Meanwhile, in Mato, Suruga had been searching for the protagonist throughout the base and asked the rest of the girls if they had seen him. Ukuomura told her that he went out with the commander. This was possible because Himari took them through the Yamagata Passage while she was on her usual patrol. We switch scenes to a cemetery, where we see Yuuki and Kayoka looking at a memorial monument. She tells him that there was an incident on Mount Gasen in Oisawa, where dozens of Shukis wandered into the human world. One of them was especially powerful, she remembered it as clearly as day. It was a Shuki with a single horn that really stood out. Because of this characteristic, she nicknamed it the Unikuano. It would end up killing several people in front of a young Kayoka. All the Shukis that crossed over that day were annihilated by the demon defense force, who came to help, or so she thought. Kayoka confesses that she had been reviewing the records and discovered that only the Unikuano managed to escape through the entrance gate to Mato. This surprised the protagonist since the Unikuno was still alive and loose somewhere. Kayoka comments that she has a score to settle with that Shuki and swore to herself that she would make mincemeat out of him. That's why she asked Yuuki to prepare for when that day comes. Hence, she brought him to the cemetery to discuss the matter. Kayoka comments that she wishes to avenge all those who died in that incident. After this, she warns him that they will return to Mato. Yuuki asked her to stop and suggested they take a break first. He clarified that he had been doing a bit of research and found out that the cafe next door is famous for its parfaits. Kayoka told him that motto is more important, but Yuuki tried to convince her by showing her pictures of the parfait. She decided to agree and entered the cafe to try the parfait. Both were impressed by its sweet taste. 
Yuuki asked her if she liked sweets, but Kayoka replied that she is more concerned about Mato. Our protagonist decided to tell Kayoka that he also lost important people in an incident, including his older sister, so he could understand how she might feel. However, he reminded her that if she focuses too much on revenge, she'll end up tearing herself apart. Since anyone would burn out without a break from work, Kayoka smiled upon hearing his words and praised the protagonist, saying that persuasion is another of his strong points. The waitress arrived to serve the food, and Kayoka was delighted. Yuuki noticed that she smiled, seeing that expression on her face brought back memories of his sister for the first time. Soon, they would be interrupted by a call. Yuuki asked if something had happened, and Kayoka replied that it was an emergency call from Mato. A single blow of the conch shell meant that no lives were in danger, but something serious was happening nonetheless. She got up and extended her hand. Yuuki understood everything and decided to transform. Both ran at full speed to the department in Mato. Kayoka asked him to accompany her to her room. Once there, she asked him to take off her clothes as a reward for using his power, which Yuuki questioned. He was worried about this, as they were entering fetish territory, and wondered if this was the kind of thing he unconsciously desired. Yuuki proceeded to undress her while Kayoka insulted him. After this, they both rejoined the squadron. Kayoka asked for a situation report. The girls recounted a discovery made during today's patrols. A formation resembling a crater appeared about 21 kilometers south, along with a large number of shukis. Yuuki asked if the red dots marked on the radar were shukis. Kayoka was concerned about this. It was the first time she had seen such a large gathering of shukis in one spot. Ukomura revealed that none of the shukis were making any moves to leave that area. It was almost as if it were some kind of nest. Kayoka asked the squadron to be prepared, as dealing with the quantity of monsters would be a complicated task. The group immediately headed to the location in three vehicles. The first to arrive were Yuuki and Kayoka, who found the nest in a completely snowy environment. Yuuki asked if he could attack them right away, but Kayoka stopped him, saying he should wait for her signal. Saruga would grow giant and crush the entire nest, while Himari would finish them off. Kayoka explained that this was part of the strategy because if they eliminate them all at the same time, it would force the monsters to merge, making it easier to defeat them. As the strategy was being carried out, a mysterious attack came out of nowhere and struck Saruga, knocking her down. Kayoka, seeing a shadow in the distance, recognized it, it was the Unikuino. It lunged at Himari, who showered the monster with bullets, but it protected itself with a shield and exploded the vehicle. Himari was forced to retreat. An albino woman, who was atop the Unikuino, mentioned she would join the fray. This surprised Himari, as it was the first time she had seen a monster speak. The albino warned her to be careful with her words, as she could do much more than just talk. The woman attacked Himari with a lightning bolt and defeated her. That lightning strike would have been enough to end the snowstorm. Kayoka appeared behind the girl and tried to attack her, but she managed to dodge it in time. Yuuki realized that Himari and Saruga were badly injured. Kayoka asked the albino for her identity, and she introduced herself as the archenemy of the Demon Defense Force. This surprised Kayoka, who didn't expect her to be from Mato. The woman then asked if she had seen her younger brother anywhere, clarifying that he's easy to spot as he's the most handsome man to ever exist. Kayoka fell silent and began to wonder if there could be more Shukis with the same ability as that woman. The albino took advantage of Kayoka's distraction to attack her with the Unikuino. Yuuki reacted in time and blocked the Shuki's blow but was forced to retreat from the impact. Kayoka seized the opportunity to use her chains and strike the albino, who defended herself with her hair. She mentioned that her little brother was obsessed with her when they were young, always following her. Despite that, the moment he grew up a little, he became a scoundrel. The Unikuino charged toward Yuuki, and he defended himself from the blows as best he could. The protagonist was concerned about this particular Shuki as it could speak and had memories. But he was surprised to recognize a gesture from the woman. She used her hair to trap the giant Shuki and crushed it, feeding it to the Unikuino. Kayoka deduced that the albino must be some kind of commander, so she went to attack her with the protagonist's help. The woman dodged the attack and commented that the world of Mato is full of curses. This caught Kayoka off guard, and she was defeated by the albino. The latter caught Yuuki, trying to kill him, but stopped upon realizing he wasn't a Shuki. This distracted her, and Kayoka took the opportunity to cut off a part of her hair, freeing our protagonist. The woman was injured. Kayoka tried to kill her in that moment of distraction, but the Unikuno protected her and took her away. Kayoka tried to follow them and ordered Yuuki to help her catch up. Yuuki ignored her and decided to rescue Himari and Suruga. Kayoka reacted and asked the protagonist to flee. 
Kayoka began to feel guilty because anger was consuming her, and that almost cost her the lives of her squadron. Later, the protagonist took Himari and Suruga to the squadron's apartment so they could recover. Kayoka commented that fortunately, the injuries weren't very serious and they would probably recover by tomorrow. At the same time, Kayoka scolded the protagonist. She couldn't believe the kind of dirty rewards that were coming out of Yuuki's subconscious. The latter defended himself, saying that the demands of his inner psyche were beginning to terrorize him too. Kayoka changed the subject, commenting that the girl riding the Unikuno must be some new kind of Shuki. For her, it's crazy to think that a Shuki could speak the human language, and that kind of news could shock the whole country. Yuuki asked Kayoka if she still remembered his story about his older sister who disappeared in a moto accident. She replied that she did, and the protagonist revealed that that Shuki resembled his sister a little. Kayoka was surprised and asked if he believed it could be his sister. Yuuki affirmed it but clarified that it was just a feeling he had at the moment. What made him doubt was that the girl also had a strange reaction when she saw his face. Kayoka commented that the Shuki talked about a younger brother, and she deduced that perhaps that triggered a memory of her older sister. Furthermore, she reminded him that according to the Shuki, her younger brother is the most handsome man in the world. In which case, if that's true, no ordinary human could be so strong. Moreover, she has never heard of a human who can turn into a Shuki. At night, Yuuki prepared dinner and noticed that Kayoka was very convinced that the albino was a Shuki. However, he began to question the possibility that she could be his sister and wondered why she would attack the demon defense forces. And above all, how she managed to stay alive until now and why she works with the Unikuino. He wondered that, in case he sees her again, he should talk to her. Ukuamura warned the protagonist that the pot he was preparing was about to overflow. This brought the protagonist back to reality, and he quickly turned off the stove, apologizing for being distracted. Ukuamura asked the protagonist to kneel as she wanted to talk to him as his teacher. Yuuki knelt, and Ukuamura didn't hesitate to punch him hard in the face, exclaiming that anyone who exposes the squadron to danger must be punished. Yuuki apologized, and Ukuamura hugged him, commenting that he had a great day. He went out to fight a Shuki nest and saved his comrades' lives, so she understands that he's tired. For that reason, she'll help him cook, warning that she's not the best at it but can do simple things. Yuuki and Ukuomura decided to make dinner together and serve the food. The protagonist reminded himself that he will find out whether that albino is his sister or not. But in the meantime, he must focus on the job. We see this albino meeting with another girl, and we discover her name, Ayaba. The woman asked Ayaba why she returned with injuries, and she commented that she was taken by surprise. Ayaba hugged her companion, Koko, who took care of healing her wounds. Ayaba got on the Unikuino and commented that the Shuki with Kayoka is Yuuki. She was sure of that but couldn't understand how he ended up resembling a Shuki. She wondered if it could be some kind of experiment by the Demon Defense Force or Kayoka's ability. In any case, the most surprising thing is that the organization allowed boys to join. Back with the protagonist, he was worried about the Unikuino's power. He was unable to block its blows and was afraid of fighting it again. Suruga interrupted the protagonist and decided to shower with him, thanking him for saving her from the Unikuino, and as a reward, she would give him a back massage. Yuuki was surprised to see her truly naked and ran away in embarrassment. Unintentionally, he ended up in Himari's room who was getting ready to shower. She didn't hesitate to pull out a chainsaw and chase the protagonist. Yuuki ran around the building trying to explain what had happened. Before Yuuki was decapitated by Himari, a portal formed nearby, and two girls emerged. The protagonist thought they were the enemy, but Himari asked him to control himself as they were members of the 6th Squadron. They introduced themselves as Tenka Izumi, the commander, and Yachiho Azuma, the second in command. Yachiho stared at Himari, who did nothing but glare back at Yachiho. If you've reached this part of the video, comment the word slave in the comments. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss the next part of this anime.